Hi guys, before we get into today's project, quick apology. Sorry I haven't uploaded many videos recently, but as a lot of my long-standing subscribers will know, I've been suffering with uh, bad shoulders and wrists. Um, good news is I've had my shoulders done and my wrist is uh, scheduled for an operation on August the 5th. So the surgeon reckons two months recuperation. So sort of October, November time I should be back in full swing because at the moment I've just been doing the bare minimum just to pay the bills. I can't really do any mu much sort of forge work. So apologies for that. Anyway, today's video is Rivnuts. If it will focus, that's my usual problem. For those of you who don't know what a Rivnut is, this will focus, I'm sure. Yep. Getting there. There we go. Um, this is it. It's this one's um, eight mil. As you can see, it's a sleeve that's threaded, um, but it's not threaded all the way up. It has a little tiny lip at the top, and the top sort of, I suppose, third isn't threaded, and it's actually um, a little bit thinner than the rest of it. And what you do, you put these in thin sheet and squeeze, squeeze them up like a rivet to give you something to bolt to. Ideal if, you cut, if you're sort of doing it blind and you've got nowhere, you can't get behind a job. Um, or it's so far away you can't get round the back of it to put the nut on. But they're really good little bits of kit for sheet metal. And I'm going to show you how to set them up without too much expense. All you need is a nut and bolt, the same size as the rib nut you're using. This is 8mm obviously. And a little bit of bar. This is 16mm and it needs to be big enough so that it's bigger than the flange at the top of the rib nut. Because it needs to sit on top of it to stop it moving. So the first job we've got to do is drill a hole in the end of this bar and I need to drill it 8mm. Now it wants to be quite a tight fit. Not tight so you've got to push or hammer the, the bolt through but you don't want any slop in it really. So that's the first job. Let's get it stuck up in the lathe and we'll have a go. Sorry the angle of the film or the camera but uh, I can't really get to my lathe very easily. If you haven't got a lathe, you could do, easily do this um, on a drill press because you don't need an awful lot. So you could just cut a piece of bar off and drill a hole through it. I think ideally I'm going to use about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch of bar, something like that. So I'm just centering it first centre bit um, and as I was saying the Rivnut tools for actually setting these can be quite expensive you can buy some cheap cheap ones but a proper Rivnut setting kit the tool that sets them is, is blooming expensive which is fine if you're doing it all day long you know if it's your job then it's worth buying the tool but if you just want to set one or two like I'm doing oh, I've lent on the automatic stop by mistake. Um, yeah, if you just want to do one or two like I'm doing then this little tool is, is dead handy and pretty quick to make. So I'm now putting the, the 8mm hole through. So it doesn't need to be very deep. I want about 3 quarters of an inch. must be just about there I would think. Can't be far off. Yeah that'd be deep enough, plenty deep enough. So we'll have that out of there. And we'll go and whip a bit off the length we want. As I say about three quarters of an inch. So just stick it in my trusty saw 
just guessing it doesn't have to be accurate about that big Bob's your ankle so there we go again the camera won't there we go focus just going to go and clean that up take the burrs off it make it nice and smooth so just want to take the uh, burrs off so it sits flat on the job quickly with the edge off there you go nice hole in a little bit of bar simple as so let's put it all together the bolt as you can see it's a nice not tight but there's not too much slop you don't need you don't want any slop basically because the uh, that bit of bar has to sit right over the, the flange I'm just going to put a hole in this bit of eighth angle iron I'm going to use that as a demo because I haven't got anything that I actually need to rive nut at the moment So, just going to punch a hole through here, and it wants to be a tight hole. Um, again, you don't want any slop, it wants to be a reasonably snug fit. So, come on, focus, you darn camera. There we go, just about. So the nut should slip in there. I'm still not focusing. Reasonably tight and snug. And that's how it starts off. And so if this was, you know, in a blind job, the way you couldn't get to the back of it, it would be uh, difficult if it was sloppy because it could quite easily drop out if you're doing it upright, or upside down, or horizontal or whatever vertical right so what you want to do slip on the, the little bush and make sure you've got enough thread sticking out so that when it's all together the thread will take up the whole of the rivet nut because you don't want to be stripping threads because there's going to be quite a lot of pressure on there you can see that's just come through it's just sticking through the bottom you don't need any further just so you've got a complete thread full. Right, so let's see if we can see what's going to happen. A couple of spanners, using an adjustable because I haven't got two half inch spanners at the moment, or 13 mil to hand. So I'm going to hold the top with one spanner and then just tighten up the nut with the other. That's all you do. As you can see at the moment, that riv nut is actually turning, which it shouldn't. That's why you need a reasonably tight fit. So we've got to wiggle it about a bit so that it bites. All right, it's bitten now. You can see it's just starting to pull up. And it, there's a reasonable amount of pressure so you've got to you've got to turn it fairly tightly. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to move the camera down so you can see really what's going on underneath. You can probably see a bit better now. When I tighten at the top, you can see that's pulling up. So it's squidging up, deforming underneath the, the angle. And you'll know when you get to the end because although you're pulling up and there's quite a bit of resistance you'll get even more resistance like when you're tightening up a nut and you get to the end you know when you've got there so you just want to go that far and then just a little nip you see that's belled out there quite a lot quite nicely 
should be nice and tight on there. So now you do, back off your lock nut and take out your bolt. And that's it. That's almost flush. Nice tight fit in there. And according to the manufacturers, if it's pulled up properly, it should actually be watertight. I don't quite know what application you'd use it for like that, but that's what they say. You can see it's belled out nicely at the bottom. So there you go. Um, you can get these in all sorts of different sizes. And then of course whatever you you know you want to bolt on, you just stick your bolt in. Bolt it down. And I think, I'm not sure what weight they'll hold, but I think they hold a, a fair a fair weight. So you could you could bolt some fairly substantial things in, which obviously you can't if you've just got um, a couple of threads cut into a bit of three mil angle iron. No way is it going to hold. Um, yeah, each one obviously is for different thicknesses. They do six mil, eight mil, ten mil. Um, I've only got a few six mil and these eight mils. But there you go. That's how to do it. Cheap and easy. If you've only got a few to do. So that's my tip for today and hopefully we'll be back on to the main videos in a couple of months time so hang in there and we'll catch you on the next one